Midnight. Coming up this week on Kings of the Rings podcast, I really hope you missed us because we are back with a little bit of vengeance and a lot of heat for the biggest party of the summer. SummerSlam is this weekend in the most mid place in all of the United States, <laughs> Cleveland, Ohio. So we're going to try to make the best out of it and not really talk about the location or the fact that the Cleveland Browns pray there at all. So ladies and gentlemen, it is summer in the land. It's our SummerSlam preview show this week on Kings of the Rings podcast exclusively on WrestleAddict Radio. And it starts right now. Not gonna lie to you, having off two weeks to play a video game that I have not played in over a decade was well worth it. The only time I actually had to leave my house, to be honest with you, was I had a birthday party to go to the weekend that it actually came out. So ne- neither here nor there. Hey, Dave, how you doing? Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to Kings of the Rings podcast, exclusively here on Rest Like Radio. We are coming to you live from from not from Twitter anymore, Facebook for the first time in a while, uh, Twitch and YouTube because tw- Twitter locked us out and Twitter Twitter's money hungry because you know Elon made a bad investment. Lady, I'm your host King Ricky Rose. Thank you guys for joining us. If you like what you're listening to or what you are seeing right now, please uh, leave a like, leave a comment, share, subscribe, leave us all the fun little reviews that you can. Uh, it's been a pretty interesting couple of weeks in the world of wrestling, particularly WWE. We've got a lot to talk about, but. Back again for, I guess, the umpteenth time. Uh, a man who also has a weird obsession with couches, Mr. Will Tarashock. How are you? Uh, dude, I, I don't know what it is. Um, <laughs> I, do, I do need a really comfortable couch, but I am a firm believer that every man needs a chair to call his own. That is, that is absolutely sat, correct, sir. I, I haven't sat in mine in almost a year, but I haven't thrown it out either. <laughs> so... Just keep that in mind because I just I, we don't hang out in our living room anymore. But the chair <laughs> is never going to be thrown out. I had that chair for fifty dollars off Facebook Marketplace. I've had it for four years. It's not going anywhere. <laughs> Listen, every man every man needs a throne of some sort in some some way, shape, or form. I'm a firm believer of that my dad had a chair. Yep. My, yep. my dad has his own chair in the living room. It's the, it's the, chair, it's the it, only chair he sat in. It's great. It's called it's called the Archie Bunker chair. It's because he yeah. was he was known for no one sits in his chair. Every man has his throne, his chair. It's his seat. It's, it could be at the head of the table at, the, at dinner. It can be the fucking toilet. But I don't know. Every man has a chair that he calls his own that no one touches. Yeah, sometimes a toilet is a great chair. Get a lot of reading done the toilet, to be honest with you. Yeah, a lot of scrolling through Facebook. Yeah, a lot, lot of depth scrolling. Depth scrolling. Um, you know, you got to pass the time somehow, right? Shout out to Squatty Body. Well, it's not. It's not. It's not being done on Twitter. That's for sure. <laughs> <laughs> no, definitely not anymore. Yeah. Money hungry bastards. Uh, we've got some fun things to go through. A lot of this is going to be focused on on SummerSlam uh, and and one of the earliest SummerSlams ever in recent history. But we're doing that because we're going to Berlin uh, like six yeah, days after that's all a good in. Point. Yeah, it is one of the earlier SummerSlams uh, that they usually have. But when you double up. Um, on shows in one month, this is kind of what happens. But before we get to all that, let's talk about some things going on in the world of wrestling, particularly WWE. So, Nick Khan and Triple H were in London because apparently they didn't get invited to the Paris opening ceremony. Um, and they were in London meeting with uh, government officials talking about, surprise, surprise, bringing a WrestleMania to London, just kind of like John Cena predicted over a year ago. Yeah, this is kind of big news. They made this very, very public that this is something that they are trying to actually move forward and do. After we kind of hinted that it was coming uh, from last year when John Cena showed up randomly, and it, this seems like this is a really, really big possibility. So, my question for you to for you, Will, is. How long do we have to wait till we get the first ever overseas WrestleMania? Well, you, you already have what the next two booked already. We have much. Vegas, Vegas, and then um, nothing else is set, and so we don't know when to get it when Indianapolis is getting it. Right, because Indianapolis got SummerSlam instead. No, Minnesota um, has SummerSlam, and Indianapolis. Well, Minnesota has SummerSlam. Indianapolis has the Rumble next has year. Has Rumble? Doesn't, doesn't doesn't Indianapolis have three? They have well, they're guaranteed a Mania, a SummerSlam, and the Rumble. Okay, so at some point they're gonna get a WrestleMania. Correct, yeah. Okay, so my guess is London will happen at WrestleMania 45. I think it's still gonna be a few years. Mm. 
Um, because I, they they probably have other plans in the works. I want. I have no idea. I wonder. I would want, love to know how far out they book like WrestleMania cities, going to start booking the show. Because how long it takes the marketing yeah. and all that kind of stuff. But even it's the fucking logo, right? And getting all that marketing material ready. Mm-hmm. It's got to take at least a year and change. Yeah, I mean, during the pandemic is when they book like three years out. Cause they booked three years out. Yeah. yeah, but that was only for the pandemic. Like, we're going here, here, and here. I think that was just to kind of like create hype. And they kind of like, you know, went to went to some of the oldies, but goodies like Dallas and whatnot. And, you know, they, yeah. they had time to they announced that right around, right around the time of the uh, no, no audience mania. Something like it was either a no audience mania or the, the actual Tampa mania. Yeah. Or it could have been the actual Tampa area. Yeah, you might be right. Yeah, it might have been the actual of, Tampa mania. It was yeah. one of those. 21. 21. Yeah. So so what we know for, for next year is that you have Rumbles in Indianapolis and SummerSlam is going to be in Minnesota. No, so Minnesota SummerSlam, my fault, is 2026. We only know Minneapolis, uh, not Indiana, has the, has the Rumble. So it, I doubt they'll do, I'll doubt they'll do 2025 mania in London. Tw- Fred's, yeah. Fred's thinks 2027. I think that. Could be that sounds enough. reasonable. That sounds yeah. reasonable to set it up and get it done. It also gives them a lot of time to do a lot of research because if we're being frank, AEW is doing all of this for them. All they, all WWE has to do is sit back and watch what AEW does and be like, okay, this is what they did. We can probably do it better. That's what's going to happen. Yeah. Yeah. That's exactly yeah, what's yeah. going to happen. They're going to start scouting. <laughs> yeah. They're going to send some scouts in. <laughs> yep. I mean, it's totally possible because, but also you guys wonder if AEW, what kind of contract they have with Wembley. Cause that could be the else, reason they went over there too. Uh, like other than Wembley, where could they do a WrestleMania? What's big enough for a WrestleMania? You can't do VO2. You do your Raws and SmackDowns and everything. There. Yeah, you do the Raws and SmackDowns. So you, need, you need a soccer stadium. You need a stadium. Yeah. WrestleMania can't be in an arena. It has to be a stadium. It's got to be Wembley. I think it has to be Wembley. But I like... When I think about it from a business perspective, there's no, I don't see a real conflict there because all in is in August and WrestleMania is in April. Sure, but Vince Vince had had a no compete with the Garden for decades. Yeah, no other wrestling promotion could book the Garden. Period. Yeah. So yeah, can you just, I'm saying contracts can just be finicky like that, and yeah. if you're petty enough and throw enough money at it, <laughs> anything can happen. It's possible, but and I, think, I don't think, I think Tony-, Tony Khan is both of those things. And when it comes to giving jabs, at t- Tony Khan would pay an extra ten million dollars to make sure WWE can't run Wembley. Put it that way. Yeah, I just don't think Tony Khan's that forward thinking. I think he is that petty, though. I, I, I mean, I, I agree. <laughs> I, I, I agree wholeheartedly. Like, I think he is that petty, but I don't think he has the the brains to kind of think that far ahead. Yeah, and then if you're Wembley, you go, okay, as soon as this deal is over, we are never signing you again. Yeah, we're <laughs> going to get the other guys. <laughs> we're going to go with the A-team. Yeah. So I, I think it's going to be a few years regardless. Yeah. Uh, but it's because it's just logistics, right? WWE yeah. has done this 40 times in the States. It's pretty much copy and paste, maybe some in local regulations you got to accommodate, like, like, like Pyro. Yeah. Right, Pyro, um, security staff. You know, all the hotels, all that kind of shit. Yeah, yeah. It could just take longer to do it. Got accommodations with London lawyers, pretty much. Yeah, they got to you got to go through the legalese and all of that stuff too. Yeah. But they they're set up yeah. for it. Like people forget, NXT Europe was based in the UK. WWE has global offices in the UK. Yeah, like yeah, <laughs> the, the audience is a thousand percent there too. Yeah, and the <laughs> audience is there too. And plus, afternoon mania, Saturday, Sunday, I'm in. That sounds fucking awesome. Yeah, like, I'm not going to lie. Two, two o'clock WrestleMania. I guess I get to wake up at 1030, just relax for a few hours, order some pizza and watch wrestling, and then still have my evening. Yeah. Bruh. Yeah. <laughs> I'm all for this. I mean, and London, yeah. London deserves it. They got the crowd for it. It would be a crazy time. Like, I'm when, – when you look at AEW and what they've done for All In, they did it once before. I was kind of disappointed – by, I feel like they didn't use enough of a city, and me and you will have been to enough WrestleManias where when WWE yeah. comes to town, it's like when we were in Philly, Everywhere. it's not Philly. It's WWE featuring Philadelphia, you know? Yeah, <laughs> like, or it, yeah. Like, especially because WWE has a good job of centralizing everything. Yeah. So all of the fans are together. Correct. Always. So like if like if we went... 15, 20 minutes on the road, it would have been Philadelphia. <laughs> like, <laughs> yeah, it would have true. very much been Philadelphia. But for where we were as a fan, 
that's what also made it super special because every Die Hard Wrestling fan has a love hate relationship with other fans. Correct. So it was, yeah, it's WWE just, it just knows what they're doing in that aspect. New York was very similar, mm-hmm. other than other than access. Yeah, um, at, well, because they they screwed up Javits or Javits had something going yeah, on. Yeah, it had, it had to be in Brooklyn. Yeah. Um, but even so, they had the shuttle, and it was easy enough to get from there to um, the Barclays. Oh yeah, absolutely, it was perfect. That's right. They, and the WrestleMania was in New Jersey, so I guess that was a little spread out. Well, That's yeah. what you really do. You, you do what you can. You do, you do what you can. So. Uh, yeah, no, this is happening. This is going to happen probably sooner rather than later, and I'd be pumped for it. I'm not traveling for yeah. it, but I'll watch it. Yeah, I, I honestly, I was just thinking this as we were talking. I would think I would rather see the production scale on TV first. I want to see the video yeah. packages. Like, I, I want to I, I experience it as a viewer mm. and not so much as an in-person fan. Yeah. I think, I, I think I'll enjoy it more watching it. Don't get me wrong. I love, I've been to one. I love that city. I would love to go back. It's also great. It's it's also well done in Watch Dogs Legion, too, as well. Um, but I, I can sit this mania out. Like, just travel. Yeah, I'm, in no, I'm yeah. in no rush to go to London. Yeah. I'm not opposed to it. I'm just not like, let's fucking go to London. <laughs> <laughs> No, it would, it would disorient me for a while being on the left side of the road and all that, too. Yeah, I wouldn't drive. <laughs> I'm a menace on American roads. <laughs> it's very, very true. So, yes, WrestleMania London happening probably very, very soon. And now over to AEW in a, in a, in a perfect example of, hey, copy our xenophobic gimmick and just change the answers a little bit. MJF has rebranded... The oh, International so Championship. No, it's the Intercontinental. <laughs> he, he, all right. So first, it was the All Atlantic. Remember that? It was the All Atlantic yeah, with the Japan flag. Do you remember that? The All Atlantic with the Japan flag. Oh my God, you're right. I forgot the Japan flag was on it. Yeah, it was the All Atlantic with the Japan flag. And then it went to the International Championship because I just don't want to say Intercontinental. And now they can. Yeah. And <laughs> and Will Ospreay had the International Championship for a while. He had the good match with Sawyer, blah, blah, blah. MJF beat Will Ospreay in an hour long match on Dynamite, mind you. Okay. Wow. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. An hour long match on Dynamite. And MJF has decided that he is so ridiculously pro-America, which I'm not surprised by this, because I feel like that's exactly who he is as a person, and decided to rebrand the international title to the AEW American Championship and make it unbelievably American out. Dude, they are this close to making MJF a Trump supporter on TV. <laughs> so <laughs> close. Like, did he approve his gimmick with Zeb Coulter at all? Like, <laughs> Dude, they should do it. They should do it. I think that'd be fucking hilarious. And it would honestly he'd be make, He'd be the guy he, to do it. it he would. Like, cause you know how Colby Covington did it for the UFC? Yes. I, so it's it would not be really the exact him. Same. But that's like how yeah, he no, feels. Kobe Covington, is, Kobe, Kobe Covington is that guy. Yeah, yeah. He's, it's... it's it's a character, but it's also like a very con- con- accurate characterization of him. Yeah. Um, but MJF, I'm also very much uh, would believe that MJF is a Trump supporter in real life. Oh, I would not doubt yeah. that for a single second. Yeah. yeah. So I think that would be fucking hilarious. But it, Tony Khan would never do it. But it would bring so much attention. I think of the memes. <laughs> think of the fucking memes that would come out of this. He just made it to the American title. That's such a Republican thing to do. <laughs> Yeah. Get this goddamn international bogus out of here. They're taking their germs. America. <laughs> like, I hate this title. Not because they keep changing the name, because I think that's hysterical that AEW can keep a freaking title the same name for long. I mean, it's it's it's, it's a great looking belt. I hate, it looks no, I hate, I hate incredible. the design of the belt. I think it's disgusting. I just look. I mean, see, as as much as I love America and I am, I can't go for some good old fashioned pro America propaganda every now and then. This one just hits for me. It's a great looking belt. It's a stupid title and a dumb idea, but it's a great looking belt. It's a great looking. belt. I hope this is. I hope this is just a temporary thing. I might buy it to be honest. <laughs> you hey, would. Me look. You would. Go to AEW shop. I doubt it's there. Let me, let me say AEW American title purchase. It's probably not. AEW is not good with mass producing belts. Yeah. I, okay. AEW shop. Oh god, they better have it like immediately. No, it's not there. No, this is the AEW belt. Honestly, the AEW belt itself was also a very pretty belt. The, a- the AEW 800, championship. Eight hundred. Yeah, like I, I want to get it, but it's like eight hundred. Like, do I want to spend eight hundred on this? But like, I bet you the quality is fantastic. No. <laughs> yeah, I mean, but yeah. it looks, it looks, 
incredible. <laughs> I mean, <laughs> AEW AW has great looking belts. They have good belt I'm designs. Yeah, they do. They do have really good belt designs. I don't know about this. Amazing. You know what's really bad? I just thought of this. Um, Dude, AEW heels the, are still on their AEWshop.com. <laughs> there is no difference <laughs> in character at this point between MJF and Logan Paul. And they're both essentially representing America as the United States champion and the American champion. Um, they're literally almost playing know, the same character Lo- at this point. Kind of, but Logan Paul... Logan Paul is more online, right? He's the social media influencer heel character. Correct. MJF isn't a social media influencer. He's a fucking mark. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and I and I and I kind of mean that as a compliment. Yeah. But I just want to similar. They're both represent. They're very extremely pro America with this. But I just I I can't get behind this belt. Like I like I don't. You know what it is for me? It's the red, white, and blue stripes. It's like the flag as the as a thing behind it. Like it's so ridiculous, which kind of makes it work for a heel. Uh, yeah, okay. They have the TNT Championship belt, the Tag Team Championship belt, and the AEW Championship belt. That's all yeah. they got. They, they, they're idiots. not doing well with mass producing replica belts at all. Yeah. What up, Smiley? Hey, Smiley. Um, Smiley broke some news. We're gonna we're gonna cyber real quick. Smiley broke some news to me about Val Venus. Did you oh, hear about this? Is, 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 is his PP still there? He didn't Surprisingly, get no. So listen to this shit. This this literally happened today before we recorded. So Val Venus, apparently anti-LGBTQ, whatever. You kind of figure this out with Val Venus if you've seen anything from him. So he made some... That, that's upsetting. He made some very disparaging remarks about Nyla, about Nyla Rose. Uh, oh, so it's specifically the... the- transgender people. Yeah, yeah. He, he made some disparaging comments about Nyla Rose recently. And so... You know how they got back at him? Some people took the Val Venus trademark. <laughs> <'Cause>, <laughs> no way. Yeah. They bought the trademark? They bought the trademark because it wasn't being used. <laughs> so we can't use oh, it. Oh, <laughs> my God. Not only that, there are some people who who created a Val Venus. Make him a drag star character right now. <laughs> so we use the name and make him a drag. So they took ValVenus.com and had it redirect to um, like a LGBTQ like organization. As well, that's pretty funny. <laughs> so Val Venus is big mad. <laughs> like fucking Let's big see. mad. Um, Val Venus dot com. Venus, yeah, Venus or Venus, yeah, Val Venus dot com. I don't know if they, the redirect got taken down or whatever, but I know someone bought uh, someone bought the trademark to Val Venus, so now he can't use it. That's fucking <laughs> Val Venus dot com. Oh my <laughs> god, it's even better. What is it? It's okay, dude. I gotta send you the link. Okay. <laughs> you, just, you, you have to. Look, I'll put it in the Discord for all of us to see. Yeah, let me look, yeah, um, put it in the Discord. I'll put it in the rest of Addict's chat. <laughs> okay. This is the, you're all welcome. Oh, I mean, I was a transgender flag. The trans flag. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Our yes. mission to support the LGBTQ plus community. <laughs> So it goes to the Trevor Project, Advocates for Trans Equality, other useful links, shop, and uh, useful support. We we'll go to the bottom. So they acro- they put acronyms for his name, Val. Valued, Valued allies, allies of LGBTQ+, <laughs> Vital Educational and Non-Judgmental <laughs> Informational Service, Val Venus. Val Venus. <laughs> Dude, they say the left can't meme, but this is world class. <laughs> right here. This is incredible. <laughs> Oh, the internet, folks, is undefeated, and I love everything about that. Oh, oh, oh. dear <laughs> God! I, if you're listening to this, I implore you go to valvenus.com. I'll even put it in the chat right now. <laughs> go to valvenus.com. <laughs> and he can't even <laughs> use his name fun. anymore. <laughs> and he can't use it. I would keep that trademark forever. <laughs> Oh, it's so. Oh, oh it's it is. Oh my god! <laughs> excellent trolling. Excellent. <laughs> Fucking excellent. Where's my applause? Yeah, line? give a, give out an applause, please. <laughs> and thank you, Smiley, for dropping that information. It's one of the, it's one of the one things today that unified WWE and AEW tribal fans. It's really freaking hysterical. Amazing, amazing. <laughs> Listen, amazing. wrestling brings people together, and so does the hatred of Val Venus, Apparently. <laughs> Hello, ladies. Oh, what a time! What a time to be alive, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, so 
moving past Val Venus and MGF, we finally have, because I've been watching the Olympics like a mofo on my downtime and not when I'm not playing college football, uh, we do have a start date for when SmackDown leaves Fox and shows up on uh, on USA Network. It's actually going to be in September. Ironic, okay. Ironically, in the weirdest in the weirdest idea wait, possible. Wait, is it, is it is it 9-11? Is that what's happening? No, it, it's Friday. <laughs> no, it's Friday the 13th. Oh, okay. <laughs> so it looks like SmackDown is leaving. Because remember, their deal was up in October. So it looks like they're just jumping ship a little yeah. bit early. So for a period of time, starting September 13th, um, or that week of September 13th, we are going to have Raw and SmackDown on the same network. For the for the rest of the year, so from September to December, Raw and SmackDown were on the same network. So no more jumping the Fox, which is a shame. But shucks, I still watch it all in Hulu. You know what it is so. about the Fox run? They the Fox run had the potential to be really really good, and we you can tell by how much Fox invested in it. Like Fox was really all in on it. For yeah, WWE WWE didn't deliver. Like this, this the reason it's the pandemic. Uh, which I think the pandemic screwed which, them over. Kind of, sort of, but Fox did everything they could. Like, yeah. they're, the, if this deal is considered a failure, it is no failure on Fox. Fox which is day. crazy to say. Yeah, which is crazy to say because WWE did crazy business, had the merger, yeah. did had like a second billion dollar. That was a billion dollar deal was to leave Fox. Yeah, but like. Business was so crazy, but Fox was just like, "Yeah, but the all that we put into you, it should have been crazier." Yeah, and I, which is which is which is an accurate statement because the ratings weren't there. Yeah, which is which is a shame because I, like I said, I think the the like not have because remember like they went live like t- mid twenty nineteen on Fox. Yeah, and things October uh, October nineteen October twenty nineteen, and then within six months, the world shut down, and it kind of put a damper on things. Uh, but like when you look at Fox and you watch like sports on Fox, you had NFL announcers college football announcers talking about like advertising WWE any chance they got like they put in a lot of effort it's just a shame that it ended yeah. the you know the way it did because like Fox on primetime it's just, it's that depth slot though it's primetime on a Friday it's Friday night yeah yeah no one watches no one watches no one's home Friday night. well no one in that key demo excuse correct. me correct is usually home on a Friday night correct um but we'll see what happens with USA. USA has been handling WWE for a very, very long time. So we'll see what they do with with SmackDown and Raw, both on their all, both on their networks for N- NXT. Probably, I think all three might be on the USA network for a period of time before the before the you know all the deals move around <laughs> for for a Q four. Oh, yeah, <laughs> yeah, you, yeah. NBC and USA never going to Q four going to go freaking bananas after they have like what the Olympics in Q three. It's going to be freaking wild. Yeah. Absolutely wild. Uh, but moving on to that, folks, it's time to talk about the biggest party of the summer happening really, really freaking early. And like I said, probably one of the most mid places in all of America, Cleveland, Ohio, uh, especially especially because LeBron is not there and The Miz is not there. Well, The Miz is going to be returning to host uh, the host SummerSlam, which I guess they had to give him something to do because they are in Ohio and Cleveland Brown Stadium. So SummerSlam is going to be this Saturday, uh, 7 Eastern. Uh, we're going to have pre-shows, all that stuff going on it's going to be a pretty interesting card i still have valvenus.com up on my computer (laughs) (laughs) it's so funny smiley just joined our discord by the way thank you smiley Um, i saw that hell yeah smiley yeah um so we have that going on and of course we have a bunch of festivities uh leading around SummerSlam weekend particularly of a SummerSlam store which the merchandise as you can see here is almost as mid as the as the city of cleveland itself to be completely honest with you they're really trying to go with like the rock and roll hall of fame theme which i mean kudos to them uh but it's going to be open starting this thursday and going through till sunday <laughs> twitch people go oh yeah that exists what the rock and roll hall of fame the rock and roll hall of fame oh yeah the rock and roll hall of fame's in cleveland why why is it in cleveland <laughs> <laughs> i i don't know to be honest with you well why is the baseball hall of fame in fucking cooperstown that's true it's the middle of nowhere. I mean, thank God. But it is literally in the middle of nowhere. I mean, Ohio does have the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame, and they have the Football Hall of Fame, too, which is kind of dope. Canton, Ohio is there as well. But, you know, you just got to go through Ohio to do it, you know. It's like the Nebraska of the, uh, of the, of the, east, of the eastern part of, east of the Mississippi, pretty much, is Ohio. 
to be completely honest. Uh, but we have the Superstore, and also, which seems to be a very interesting thing, they're having a Damien Priest Live event. Essentially, they're going to be showing Damien Priest 24 at a probably a local theater or something, and they're gonna have a panel for the after show. So I believe his 24 is probably coming out this week. I don't know the exact probably. date. But yeah. This is interesting that they're doing that. This is a very Comic-Con-esque type thing that they're doing. And this would be a, this would be a, it would be a shame for him to lose <laughs> this week if you're investing all of this in him. Unless this becomes something that's very, very gimmicked. Like Gunther shows up and ruins the whole thing, you know what I mean? God, that would be <laughs> remarkable. There'd be no point, though, yeah. right? Because you don't need it. It doesn't. It's not going. I don't think it's going to do anything for the match. It, it's interesting. WWE is really beefing up their like different stuff. Like Sami Zayn had a comedy show. The Undertaker has his Dead Man tour, and now you're having yeah. Damian Priest do his uh, do this little this little Comic Con panel after the viewing of his thing. I'm excited for his 24. Um, I think it's going to be interesting and pretty revealing. What do you think of his 24? I I hope I like it. Because, like, I'm probably, dude, all the 24s are really yeah. good. Like, I, I want to be a Damien Priest fan. I, I want to get on this, this push, this marketing push yeah. that they are putting into him. But I don't know. Something about it is just like, yeah. I think once a Judgment Day turns on it, because here's the thing. They, they want him to be a baby face, but he's still kind of heelish on TV. Right, they need he needs he needs to give me a reason. You need to give me a reason to cheer for him, other instead other than just like, hey, like this guy, he's a baby face. Yeah. Like you gotta you gotta you gotta make me you gotta give me a reason to cheer. So this twenty four is a good step towards that direction, and I think a massive heel turn by Finn Balor and screwing over both him and Rhea Ripley makes them two both massive baby faces. Yeah, I think that I think that's the, the issue too, as well as that. Judgment Day is half baby face, half heels. And then yeah, you have Carlito. Like, yeah, there, it's like like they're known as a heel group, with two of the biggest baby faces just waiting for their breakout moment as baby faces. Yeah. And you got to get like you got to give it to us. They got to stop doing this half-ass thing. Like Priest promos have been okay. His his storylines have been pretty solid, but he's also been kind of overshadowed by Money in the Bank. Then Seth Rollins. Then Rhea came back. And then that stupid wager. And then he didn't kick out. And yeah. He's he's had a lot of bad luck in his title run. Yeah, it, 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 there's still a lot of positives there too, but it's just like there's a lot of raw is wrapped in the Judgment Day. Yes, and is. Judgment Day still a little yeah, raw. Yeah, which I mean, as a faction, that's a great thing. But there's a lot, but all of those storylines are kind of clashing with each other, and I think that's the idea. But at some point, you have to start separating them and kind of like exactly. untangling this web. Yeah, and that and that's this is where it happens because. Rhea and Liv. Oh, I can't wait to talk about that. What? Yeah, it's that is other than Cody, obviously. That that if if Cody wasn't facing up against Solo and if Cody wasn't with the Bloodline, I could see Rhea and Liv main eventing. Honestly, absolutely. Like it's it's a it's a very believable main event. It's something I want to see. It's something the internet is very much talking mm. about. And you have that "what's going to happen" question. Yes. All over that. Oh match. yes. With with this match, it's with Damien Priest. It's eh. it's really interesting. A lot of so there's about five championship matches on this card so far. Yeah, it's a great it's a great five card. championship matches. Don't and get me two, wrong. It's a phenomenal pretty, card. five championship matches and two pretty much marquee matches. Like it's it's yeah. it's built it's built beautifully, beautifully built. Yeah. Um, with everybody, with with everything. Uh, so let's go into the first one. Obviously, we have Sola Sokoa, uh, who just looks like a demonic version of. <laughs> Of the weekend, <laughs> each and every week, <laughs> versus Cody Rhodes. Uh, Solo pinned Cody at the last PLE. Solo and the Bloodline 2.0 have been beating the crap out of everybody around Cody uh, for the last couple of weeks. They're the number one contenders for DIY's tag team titles as well. They are doing their damnedest to make the Bloodline 2.0 dominant and really it's kind of working um especially because jacob fatu was out of his flipping mind every week <laughs> and just, oh it's so yeah, good out of his flipping mind uh tonga loa now has an eye patch now which i think is freaking hysterical <laughs> he got lasik did he 
<laughs> I was gonna no. say I don't <laughs> in one okay, eye. With, in um, one eye. With, with, <laughs> well, you, can, you can have astigmatism in That's one true. eye. Right? Like true. my left eye is way worse than my right Fair eye. Fair enough. Uh, like I, I have a small astigmatism in my right, but a huge one in my yeah. left. So fuck me, I guess. <laughs> but um, Jacob Fat too. He's so believable because Corey Graves does a so good job of just like, oh my god, this guy is dead. Someone get the police. <laughs> like, he does a very good job of putting him over, as does Wade Barrett. So, yeah. it's Bloodline, I, people kind of poo-pooing on Bloodline 2.0 a little bit. I think it's excellent. I, I really do think it's excellent. Solo, I remember on this podcast last year, I was like, what happens to Solo after this Bloodline story wraps up? Like, he's got nothing. And then like, well, fuck me, I guess. I was way wrong. Yeah. This is, he's just taking it and run with it, and it's incredible. Yeah. Um, but does he get the title? Oh, hell no. Not yet. Not yet. Well, we, we got to answer one of two questions. Question number one yes. is with Roman coming back eventually in this Bloodline Civil War, it's going to happen. Does that need the title? I would say no. I would also say no. But then is question number two. You still set up Cody and Rock. Do you, is that still something that is possible? Because I know Dwayne got injured on his movie set, and who knows his schedule. Dwayne got injured. Surprise, surprise, right? Right. So if it's funny, he got injured after his wrestling run. Thank God. He goes back. To, he, he goes back to the more fake thing of st- movie stunts <laughs> and, and hurts himself. <laughs> <laughs> and he hurts himself. So, but anyway, like if if that match can't happen. Yeah. What is like? What is Cody really still holding the belt for? Other than the fact that he's just still hugely over, and who are you going to build to take it all off of him? I think Solo makes sense. If the answer to Dwayne is no, he's not going to be able to do it at, at mm-hmm. all. Then the answer to does the title need the bloodline need the title could easily be a yes. Yeah, because Romans is like could easily has come back. And could do also one of two things. He could let Solo lose and then spear him, mm-hmm. or spear him and make him lose one of the That's other. That's true. Because Sol- Solo's whole claim to fame is the bloodline doesn't tolerate losers. Roman, you lost. Yeah. And Roman can come back and be like, hey, Solo, you lost. Yeah. So it, it comes to this very interesting question, too. And it's one of our voters' questions uh, for this week. Do we see Roman come back at SummerSlam? I think so. I'm. You know why? Because he because he came back at SummerSlam in 2020. Oh, okay. Little 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 symmetry, little marrying. Yeah, yeah. And that here's the thing. That was the debut of a brand new Roman Reigns character mm-hmm. as the biggest heel in the business, maybe possibly yeah. ever. SummerSlam 2024. He debuts back as one of the biggest baby faces that Vince McMahon's boner always. <laughs> It's just they come out and you just go, oh, this is a different Roman Reigns. And I think that symmetry between SummerSlams is a perfect place he to do it. He comes out dressed as The Rock during the Survivor Series debut. Oh, my God. It's actually The Miz. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So we ever. But no, tri- Triple, H, Triple H loves his Easter eggs. Yeah. Right. And that's one of them. Yeah. That, that's, that, that's a valid point. The other question is then what is more important to Roman? Is it. Getting the title back, or is it getting control of the bloodline? Roman's story, especially after WrestleMania, was all about choices and consequences to those choices. So he has mm-hmm. to make a choice. Does he want the title? Is the title more important than being the tribal chief? I think they're one and the same. Because you're the head of the table, you're the head of the family. Correct. That is that is like that is symbolized as the one who was providing, right? That's the whole. That's his whole. Thing. And it's also he needed to be the so, champion so he can provide for everybody else, though. Exactly. So, and that that is everything the title symbolizes. Like everything the tribal chief symbolizes is also symbolized by the WWE. So you're title. saying him going for a Which title it, will automatically kind of de facto make him a tribal chief. Yeah, like I think they're one and the same. It's. I think the question also goes to be how far is he willing to destroy his family to save his family? That's a good one. That's a good one. You know what I yeah. mean, because like if you if you're gonna save the family from his tyranny, you have to beat the yeah. Like you have to draw blood. Which is very ironic that that Roman has to save the family from someone else's tyranny. Like Roman wasn't terrorizing yeah, right? his entire when, family when, when, when he was the gaslighter. Yeah. And we're gonna root for yeah. him, right? So so I I think that's why I also think that, that, that does the title does this feud need the title is a yes. Mm-hmm. However, I think the Rock versus Cody is also big enough. 
and Roman versus Solo for the, the head of the table is big enough without the title to, to have those two mega storylines yeah. going into the fall and then next 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 yeah. year's WrestleMania. There is still, and there you also still have the question of like Rock and Roman is still on the table, you know? Yeah. And Cody and Rock also, you kind of set up Cody and Rock at at Raw after Mania this year, you know? You still don't know what Rock you gave him. You don't know what Rock gave him. There is still that kind of that elephant in the room, that kind of MacGuffin that we kind of have, need to get answered. Um, it's the watch. <laughs> another watch. <laughs> no, it's like, you know, like they got Dusty's watch back. So you think the Rock, oh, the Rock gave him the watch? Yeah, made, they, made, they make it part of the storyline. Rocky gives him the yeah. watch. Because like, you'll know what this is right when I give it to you. When it's small enough to fit in his hand, it could easily be that's the watch. That's very true. That's that, Also, that's a great story. That's a great story I'd love to see play out, you know. For the title, this could easily set up into like Rock versus Cody because Rock can say like, "Oh, Roman couldn't get the job done, so now I've got to do it," which will it piss off Roman, and then you get yeah. Roman Rock. Yeah, like once 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 Roman once Roman gets his throne back from Solo, the, then the Rock comes in. And he's like, "Hey, buddy, what's <laughs> yeah, yeah." <laughs> Um, it's a ticket stub from the Jungle Cruise. That was a good movie. Okay. <laughs> the Jungle Cruise is entertaining. It's a ticket stub from the Jungle <laughs> Fuck you, Taquan. You're ruining my fantasy book. It's bucket. really good. Bloodline Hollywood versus Bloodline Wolfpack at War Games. <laughs> Although, Solo does look like Bloodline Wolfpack. I'm not going to lie. If you look at the color scheme, it is like NWO black and it, white it, versus Wolfpack. It, is. it really is. It really is. <laughs> so, like, you, I feel like you can do all of these things. You can have Rock, Cody, Rock, Rome. You can kind of have it all in the same calendar year leading into Mania. It's just a matter of who faces who at Mania and who faces who maybe, you know, at like a Rumble or something like that. Yeah. It's an interesting thing. Yeah, it's going to be. I. But the, but to answer your question, does Roman come back? The original question, does Roman come back? Yes. Mm. I, I think so. SummerSlam is. Big four, and it needs to be a transition into the next stage, which is the fall, new quarter, building up towards Survivor Series, and then we're right back in Mumble season. Yeah. Like, this is the halfway point. You got to start telling that story of the the next story of the Bloodline. Yeah. So, absolutely. Yeah, Roman comes so back. So, then the big question is, if, if Roman comes back, this is also going to be the general question. Who wins this match? I'm still going with Cody because I still think Cody's still the man. He's still, he's still the top. I'm going to go, go with Cody as well. Yeah. I think they they invested too much in Cody. They had the giant Japan tour highlighting Cody as well. Somehow Japan had one of Dusty's one of Dusty's robes that they returned to Cody. Interesting. Yeah, I was like <laughs> Codarius Rhodes. Um yeah, I was like <laughs> I was like, why did Japan have one of Dusty's robes? All right, I'm not gonna question it. I was like, Dusty was. Maybe maybe Dusty just left it there, left it in the hotel room. <laughs> just forgot about it. <laughs> this is like, oh, shit. Don't worry about it, baby. Keep it. <laughs> so. I got so many of those at home. <laughs> <laughs> Cody is Indiana Jones bus for Dusty Artifacts. That's also very true. <laughs> God. A train. A So. Be amazing. So, yeah, we're going to go with Cody. K will put their predictions up. Uh, at another time. Next, we were just talking about this. Damien Priest versus Gunther in literally the same storyline of Triple H versus Booker T. If you've li- Wow. <laughs> it is. <laughs> as soon as Gunther said, uh, being poor. People like no, you. <laughs> well, no. Before that, he said, we all know being poor is a choice. I go, wow. <laughs> Yeah, he did say that. <laughs> he went right after poor people. Yeah, I, I heard that go, he just became a next level heel. I was like, Jesus Christ. He was like, there's people like you who should be world champ. I was like, oh, wow, I guess Triple H wrote this one. <laughs> so that really that really upped this rivalry for me. And then, like, they started fighting. The Damien Priest coming out and just punching him right in the face, too, was <laughs> just like, okay, thank you. I know I like you again. No, that was like last week. He came out. He was, was, he was going to say something. He just started punching him. <laughs> just punching him right in the mouth, which is perfect. It's what you should have done. And then they just went completely NXT parking lot in the back. They just kept fighting. Yeah, great. <laughs> it's great. Raw, Raw, Raw has been, honestly, Raw has been a lot better than SmackDown. It has. SmackDown, other than the bloodline, has been kind of really shitty. Yeah, and DIY. DIY is doing better on the internets again, which is fantastic. Good for them. You haven't seen the videos of uh, I have Chubb I've trying to RKO funny. Randy. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's pretty funny. Um, it's this is an interesting one because you have you have Berlin, 
coming up. You have Berlin in literally like four weeks after this, 28 days. It's a long month in August. Because I get paid three times. That's how I know it's a long month. Um, you get you have 28 days to Berlin. So the big question is, does Gunther come in at already the world champion or does he win it in Berlin? And this is a hard one for me because Damien beat the crap out of Gunther going up when Raw went off air. So logic tells me, old old wrestling logic tells me Gunther beats him. But I don't yeah. I don't know about that. I mean <sighs> I I do think Damien wins because the bloodline is gonna screw over Rhea. Not the bloodline, the judgment day is probably gonna screw over Rhea first. Yeah. Okay, I can see that. Yeah. So then but or there could be his thing. If you do shenanigans in this match too, like Gunther has to win. And then you can go in as as champion. Cause you can't really do shenanigans and help Priest win. No. I don't know. Yeah, it, it's it's but they're gonna they're gonna if 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 he wins if he goes over clean, how do you justify the match in Germany? Interesting. So I I I'm I'm inclined to go with Damien as well because I think for marketing purposes, for future promotional purposes, the money is in Gunther winning in Berlin because that moment from in like that moment will be televised for years in Germany. Yeah. Like True. that moment of him winning the world title in Germany is going to be a marketing thing. And also there is no way Gunther goes into Berlin, even if he's a heel on TV, there's no way he's not a baby face. So in that in that you know, with all that in hand, Damien has to cheat to win. I think Damien has to play into, yeah, I'm, See, I'm a street right. I mean, I'm though, a but like, he's supposed to be a baby it's, face. It's, and they put him in, like, you have a 24 for him coming out, so it's automatically kind of makes you a baby face. Like, yeah. 24s aren't going to make everybody automatically a baby face. Remember, like, Miz's 24? Yeah, it was excellent. You were like, this is incredible. <laughs> like, you know? But like, but, like, Damien Priest shouldn't be heelish at all. You want to be, like, a tweener? No, he should be a baby face. I agree. So, like, it's the way that this match is scripted is going to be extremely interesting. Ooh. Judgment Day wins it for Priest, then Priest turns on JD. Judgment Day. That could work. Interesting. Yeah, it's like, this is a funk. You, this, the, this has to be a two-part story. I, I agree, but how do you, I don't know how you do it. I, I don't know either. Cause like, cause like I could totally see, I could totally see Gunther winning by, um, Judgment Day shenanigans. Yeah. And then Damien gets his rematch. Yeah, I know. I just, I'm, my thing, I think like, the money is in Gunther winning. Cause like, either he's a champion or he's a challenger. He's a face in Berlin. It's going to yeah. happen. Like, there's no way around it. Yo, Jazz, that Jazz dude has hit his second home run tonight. It's five four yards. <laughs> nice. Let's go. Nice. Let's go. So, so my thing is like you. I mean, do you have Ludwig Kaiser hasn't been around in a while? Does Imperium show up in this match? Is there a DQ finish? Oh God! Like, there's a lot of stuff is, that could is happen. Kaiser hurt? He might be. Might be what hurt. happens when you date Tiffany Stratton? Um, <laughs> right. Who always bad? Ao. Yeah. Uh, like. There, this this could be a dusty finish. This could be totally a lot of shenanigans. This could be a no contest, and you have the rematch. You know, it, it, this is of all of all the things happening at at SummerSlam. I think this is the most unpredictable one because this is clearly yeah. leading to Gunther at Bash in Berlin. Yeah, is he is he going to be champion or challenger? Or challenger. Right, the, I think it's going to be challenger. I, I'm going with Damian. Yeah, the money is. I think that's challenge. I think the money's in the moment. The money's in the moment. The world title gets um, the world title gets the main event at Bash in Berlin. Cody will probably do like a six man tag, something random, <laughs> you know. Um, and you kind of just work with there. So yeah, I'm gonna go. With, I'm gonna go with Damien. Damien somehow, some way, retains this title. It was a it was a yeah. DQ finish. We both lose. So <laughs> so we'll see what happens. Moving on to the the first marquee matchup of this non title matchup. The match we've been waiting for literally since the Rumble. CM Punk, Drew McIntyre, with style icon referee Seth Rollins. This is the this is the best way to put together two storylines. I love this. <laughs> I love this so much because 
because people were shitting on like, oh, Seth deserved better. I'm like, dude, Seth is eating the shit up. He has a robbery with I both of them, and I he gets to play awesome. it out. Oh, he gets to play it out yeah. as a ref. I think it's awesome. Yeah. I think it's so fucking good because it's going to be SummerSlam 97. Everyone's calling for it. I'm one of them. Taker, Austin, uh, sorry, Sean, Taker, and Brett with Brett was the referee. Yeah. And this is what led it to Hell in a Cell. Dude, honestly, this is going to lead to Hell in a Cell. You know what, when's Bad Blood? Bad Blood is uh, October. I want to say mid-October. All right, no, so, early, all it's right, early so October, my fault. Early October. So, okay, so get Charles this. will be 1997. there. 1997, SummerSlam. Yeah. It was Sean, Brett, uh, Sean and Taker versus with Brett as special guest referee. Yeah. No, Sean as special guest it referee. Was, yeah. Sorry, Brett versus Taker. Brett versus Taker. Sean as special guest referee. Yes. Um, Sean kicked Bret Hart in the face, but promised to call it down the middle. Yeah. So he reluctantly counted the three count. Um, well, he kicked Taker in the face, and he counted the three count for Bret. So Bret won the yeah. title. And then Taker had to feud with Sean, and that led to Hell in a Which Cell. Which led to the debut of Kane. Seth. Exactly. So Seth is going to be Shawn Michaels here. Yeah. He's going to kick one of them in the face, and then Drew and Punk are somehow going to go to Hell in a Cell. Could this lead? At, at bad blood. At bad oh, it's blood. beautiful. Triple H is living his best life with this. Could... <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Dude, it's just Easter eggs and callbacks and member berries and all the right things. Could, could you imagine if this leads to like a debut of like a new cane or something like that? <laughs> God, please. No. That's That's got to be Reggie. That's got to be Reggie. Something like that. Um, I Could this lead? Because I don't think they've ever done it before. Because these 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 storylines are so interwoven, Punk and Seth, and Seth and Drew, and Drew and Punk, and er, could this lead to the first ever triple threat Hell in a Cell? Dude, it is a high Dude. possibility. <laughs> Dude, I'm fucking here for it. That is such a great idea. Because you like these storylines are so intertwined. There's no way of get of separating yeah. them. You have they all have to collide. They've done tag teams. Tag teams in Hell in a Cell. Was unreal. It was, it was just in the new day. Yeah. Dude, it was no, it was Triple H and Shawn Mike. It was DX versus Shane, Vince, and Big Show. And then they did then they did New Day and Usos. Yeah, they did New Day and Usos too. It was a two on three handicap match. DX versus Shane, Big Show, and Vince. That match is unbelievable. Shane almost dies. Well, that's like every <laughs> Shane match. Oh. No, but like for real. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so the Quan Summit has already been a triple threat Hell in a Cell. Cena versus Punk versus Del Rio. Don't remember that at all. Don't remember yeah. that. <laughs> Probably because it was Del Rio. <laughs> but they should do it. They should I think, do it. I think there's a lot. I think this would be fantastic for them to do it. A triple threat Hell in a Cell with them. Do it. Do it at Bad Blood, Absolutely. dude. I'm telling you, the, the symmetry, it's all there. Yeah. I think, and like, listen, I also the money is in Drew being angry, being an angry Scotsman. He, he's fantastic as the Angry Scotsman. Oh, Punk yeah, wins. I think Punk, Punk wins, wins clean. Not clean, but Punk Punk's wins. Winning. There's going to be something weird that's going to happen. I think, like, Punk. Yeah, Seth's going to hit yeah, Drew. Yeah, Seth's hitting Drew. Punk's going to. And then Punk, he's going to have to count. I think Punk. Seth's going to hit Drew. I think Seth's hitting Drew. Punk's going to GTS Seth, and you're going to have another ref come and count the three. Oh, that. <laughs> That would be good too. <laughs> if Seth gets screwed out of the fin ball. Yeah. <laughs> that'd be pretty you know what? I wouldn't be mad at that. That'd be yeah, cool. Yeah, I think I think that there that's how you set it all up. But like, yeah, this this is a number two part of it. It's gonna end up bad blood. I think it's gonna be fantastic. But I think I think the more pissed off Drew can get, the better. So Yeah. I either way, punk punk wins. Seth hits Drew while aiming for punk. That could also yes. Yeah. 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 But I I'm I'm gonna go punk. You you Punk hasn't won. Punk. I don't think Punk's actually been in a match outside of Royal Rumble. Punk has to no, get away. hurt. It's, yeah. Punk just needs to survive the match and not get hurt. Yeah. Yeah. Punk. Punk needs. Punk needs to win. Drew can take a loss as he just gets angrier and angrier. Trying to keep it at that. Moving on to the Women's World Championship match. Uh, Bailey versus Nia Jack, who's actually getting like thinner and thinner like every week. She looks really good. Yeah, she looks yeah. great. She looks great. She's doing. She's doing a great job. Yeah. With her physique, yeah. and I'm glad she's getting healthy. Yeah, no, she she looks fantastic. Her characters, I think, never been better. Um, as the yeah. queen, you have you have Tiffy, you have the Tiffy thing as well. Whether she's going to cash in 
or not. Um, and to be honest with you, I love me some Bailey, but I think I think it's time to put the belt on on a heel Naya. Yeah, Bailey has been a garbage champion. She has done nothing since WrestleMania. There's really nothing for her. I, don't to, even, who, I think there's nothing for her to do. Exactly, yeah. yeah. Would she have a match against Naomi? Maybe? She had a match at in Naomi. It was it was like a friendly. A, like a, <laughs> yeah, like a TV match against Tiffany Stratton. Yeah. Like, has she been on a pay per view? Yeah, it was the match with Naomi. So. Oh, it was the okay, match with Naomi, sure. and then she also was in the she was in the last uh, PLE as well. So she was. Don't even remember. So yeah, get this get this belt off of her. The will they won't they of Tiffany and Naya is way more interesting. Yeah. Yeah. I think yeah, I think that's that's what oh Bailey was not in Money in the Bank. I'm sorry, I have the card up here. Uh but yeah, no. The will they won't they and I think Naya deserves it. She's had a great run. She was fantastic yeah. at Queen of the Ring. Let her run with it. The last time they gave Naya the championship uh was at Mania thirty four and she was a babyface, and that was an excellent story. Like it, it was, was- with Alexa. with Alexa and Mickey, and it was an excellent, it was a well done story, and everybody wanted Nia to win, and she won. She just couldn't sustain it as a babyface because she's not naturally a babyface. She is naturally a heel, yeah. and a heel run with Nia as the world champion, and Tiffany, Tiffy, kind of looming with the with the briefcase, is a story that needs to be said, and it becomes more intriguing because then you have somebody who is of the bloodline. With a championship belt. Yeah. That's a very good point. <laughs> yeah, Nia's like the forgotten stepchild of the bloodline. Yeah. She's she's the rock's direct cousin. Yeah, she's never recognized. Like Naomi got recognized more than yeah. Nia Jax. Which is Naomi and Nia Jax are both in that like bloodline, like the big family tree. They're both there. Yeah, yeah, they're both there, but Naomi got like more like I feel like the internet recognized Naomi more. <laughs> yeah. Um, but Nia they, like, really probably, honestly they probably use Nia's real name. They use Naomi's. Or is it in brackets? No, they use Naomi's real. They use Naomi's real name and Naya's real name, but then their brackets are. Um, is Na- Naomi and Naya? Correct. Jax, yeah. They're, right. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. That makes more sense. Yeah. Uh. Yeah. I mean, I like. I love Bailey. Bailey. I'm. I'm a Bailey buddy all the way all to day, the end. Every day. And she had a good story up until WrestleMania, but her character is not a great champion as a baby face. She was an excellent champion as a heel. So I don't want to say she's a bad champion. Oh, she's a beautiful. Heel. But Ding her, dong. Hello. Belly was amazing. Her, yeah. With, with, and with Sasha as well as that side. Uh, the two women power trip uh, during the, 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 uh, the Star Wars of the pandemic. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> they carried, correct. they carried that company yeah. for months. Yeah, it was great. Yeah. But Bailey is baby is a baby face champion for whatever reason. This doesn't work. Not anymore. She's too, you know, she's older now. When she was like the bright eyed, bushy tail, like side ponytail, Bailey. Yeah, she, she doesn't. She she wants to be a baby face, but she doesn't know how without being the hugger. And she doesn't want to do the hugger Bailey again. Which I don't blame her for. Here. I, don't, I don't blame her yeah. either. I don't blame her. Either. If I were her, I wouldn't want to do it. But as a fan, I kind of want to see it. Again. <laughs> I think we all want to see it again. There's all just like for like a yeah. month. So here's a big question. Does Tiffy cash in and screw us up? No, I don't not. think so either. She needs a new. Re- She's not ready. She is no way near ready to be champion. Yeah. No. Not what um, I, Nia Jax des- deserves a run. Yeah. And I think Tiffy's going to get a, some more experience being in that limelight. She gets to dazzle her briefcase and kind of run with she that. She needs a new briefcase. They, like, they're just making her walk around with a beat up briefcase. It's horrible. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Uh, like, she's not necessarily green as a, as a competitor and a performer, but she is definitely going to be green as, like, in the spotlight and as a champion. Correct, yeah. So. Her being in that scene with Nia is going to do way more help than her cashing. Here's an out. Here's here's something too. I I think Nia does win this, and I'll be very happy for her because ever since she returned, she's done she's done fantastic work. The problem is, Charlotte's almost ready to come back. All right, Ricky, I just had a crazy thought. I know Charlotte's ready to come she's back. Almost I think ready. Her she's almost ready. She's, she's training at the PC. But let's 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 rewind okay. about like let's let's rewind. Eight months. Okay. To December? the Royal oh, Rumble. Rum, the Royal okay. Rumble. When when Jade Cargill debuted. Yes. Oh <laughs> imagine, Jesus Christ. Okay. Imagine if this run, instead of Tiffany Stratton, was Jade, her and Naya, and she won money in the bank. And Jade was Naya's heavy. Lord Almighty. As a heel. <laughs> Lord Almighty. We're looking at a completely different <laughs> and much better Jade Cargo because this they tried him with Bianca and it it's fallen flat. They're fun. They're having too much fun. 
Like the it's one of those things where like it's like it's like the D one athlete going up against a D three school. Like you're just fucking around at this point. They're like yeah. <laughs> you know yeah. like they were on hot ones recently. And it was a funny hot ones too. I, I did see that. Which it, it is that is I did see that, which is good, yeah. right? Because they're both charismatic. It's way better for Bianca, but Jade she needs to turn it up. Yeah, and she she's she got a little exposed. This this baby face one of hers got her a little exposed. She's still she's still a, a level of green, but I think it's coming. I think there there's when Jade turns because we know it's happening. Like it's going to happen because I don't think you. Bianca's the Black John Cena at this point. I don't like. I don't think you turn. <laughs> yeah, Bianca's way too good for PR and uh, charity exactly. work. Exactly. And- I think you turn Jade at some point. I think we just have to wait on it. But what? Like the yeah. thing is, what's it gonna take? Um, but Jade's money in the bank. Oh my lord. <laughs> oh, that's a scary thing. And her and her being Nia's heavy. Yeah. Because the show that's the thing. Nia doesn't need a heavy. It's like China is Triple H is heavy. Yeah. This this is the role reversal would be fantastic. Oh. Uh, yeah. And and because Jade's away, and Jade would be a much better mouthpiece for Nia because Jade can talk that shit. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> and Nia's not great on the mic. Nia, still. she's she's good at she's good enough. Yeah. But she's not Nia, great. Nia, like if like in ad libbing Nia, like Nia in real life is funny as fuck. Like she's, she's the, the BBL Bailey line from a few weeks ago. Didn't <laughs> me off, not gonna lie. Like not <laughs> that BBL Bailey. <laughs> That's the thing with Nia. Like she plays a mean person, but like from what I've seen her, like she's a character. Like she's just a just a funny person. Like in real yeah. life, so like I think yeah. she has an issue like trying to be serious, but like the BBL Bailey line like kind of like bridge the gap between like this is hysterical, this is also like a heel thing to say, you know. So I think she hasn't found her snark yet with that but i think she's she's on a great run i want her with this title i think she's going to do wonders with this title and the dynamic between her and tippy is going to carry to the rumble yeah yeah this is this is easily um the, her best run of her career absolutely easily a- absolutely and, and congrats to her for persisting and staying yeah. with it she made me a fan she made me a Nia, Nia Jax made me a fan yeah. so i appreciate that yeah. so moving on to if is this isn't the main event, which is probably not going to be, and if it's not the main event, Roman might be returning. This should. Oh god, that, that picture is just. There's a lot going on there. It's, <laughs> it's excellent. Going on. It's all in the <laughs> yeah. eyes. It's the eyes and we have a smile. Look yeah. at that. Um, this should open the show. It's a wild way to open a show, but it should open. Oh god. <laughs> yeah. The story of the summer for WWE: Liv Morgan. Rhea Ripley in a custody of Dominic Mysterio match <laughs> is what's going to happen. Let's recap what happened with this whole thing. Um, you have Rhea Ripley beats Becky at WrestleMania night one opening in one of the best openers in WrestleMania history, mind you. Yeah. <laughs> that was an yeah. excellent wrestling match, gender notwithstanding. Like, that's an excellent wrestling match. Um, Liv attacks Rhea the next night on, on Raw. And inadvertently <laughs> injures Rhea. Like, that was not supposed to happen. <laughs> okay, inadvertently injures Rhea. Rhea has to relinquish. She goes away. She gets married. She also gets in crazy shape, by the way, after getting married. Um, Becky has to run for a while, and then Liv takes the title off of Becky, and Liv goes on what's known as her revenge tour, where she tries to take everything that Rhea took from her, including the Judgment Day, and most importantly, Dom Mysterio, who lived his best life all summer. A mistress, a girlfriend, and a real-life wife. Getting chicken nuggies and PlayStation every Monday on Raw. (laughs) (laughs) It has been pretty funny. (laughs) You know, Rhea Fun... Liv's been taking care of Judgment Day. Yeah, pretty much. (laughs) Liv has pretty much attacked Dom whenever she can. Rhea came back. Uh, Rhea's been mad at Dom. It is literally Eddie Guerrero in China is what they're doing. Uh, it's the Eddie Guerrero in China storyline when Eddie screwed up and things like that. But this is going to be a little bit of a of a rabbit twist. Recently, Dom pretty much... I don't know how Dom did it because I know you saw that Raw when pretty much Liv Morgan was oh, walking yeah. around in... Barely any shorts. <laughs> What's girls like you don't get the guy, but girls look like me do. Like you are correct. <laughs> yeah. yeah, yeah. You are correct. Yeah, I mean it's 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 excellent. And this week when her burning everything, <laughs> yeah. God, it's just yeah. Ugh, she's just a crazy stalker. You could be like yeah, and Dom stalk me. 
<laughs> Dom cursed her out in Spanish and and said, "You are nothing to me." Blah blah blah. Liv Morgan had the best ugly, the best fake ugly cry I've seen in a while. I was that's like, "That's good. really good." <laughs> I was like, "You're trying. It's almost there. Up oh, there yeah, it is." Yeah, good. And then Rhea just licked Dom's face on TV. I was like, "Okay." <laughs> That was ad lib. Yeah, that had to be ad lib. Um, I was like, I hope Buddy's not watching this. <laughs> um, and but here's the thing, though. Like, was the Dom Maria relationship? It was never sexual. It was insinuated like, that it was. Was it? Was it? My Dom Dom, mommy's on top. Yeah, I, yeah, I guess. But like, did you did you ever think for a second? No, they're fucking. Oh no, not never, at all. No, not once. at all. Never no, once. All. Right, like this. Like, there's no, I'm saying, like, in kayfabe, there's no sexual tension there. No. Between Dom and, like, I, I got more of a um, Joker-Harley Quinn type relationship, just sex, sex is reversed. Okay, fair enough. Like, she, Rhea, Rhea manipulated Dom from her his father, and he made him, like, my, my gimp or my bitch. Pretty much. Like, it, I, I never viewed it as, like a, like, a sexual thing. So the fact that, like, Rhea's just like, oh, no, Dom's, like, my man. <laughs> we belong together. It's just like, what? Which, which what? makes it interesting when you bring that up because, like. Like, if Rhea came back and just cucked Dom, it would have been so much fucking better. Dude, it would have been so much better. It, it, it's the irony like, of. Dom was... healed. <laughs> Dom, Dom, Dom. <laughs> Here's a treat. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Here's a lick. <laughs> You know, th th that's the irony of the storyline because Liv is essentially doing to Dom what Rhea did to Dom all along. What Dom wanted Rhea to do. <laughs> <laughs> you know, so like Rhea manipulated Dom, took him away from her family, blah, 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 blah. Uh, took her away from his family, took him away from her, whatever. You know, Rhea, Rhea did all of that, manipulated Dom, started the tension, but... Here's the kicker, and here's where I think this is going to be the greatest thing ever, because Rhea's not winning this title at all. Not a chance. Not a chance, not a chance. in hell. It is either Dom that's going to screw over Rhea, or it's Finn. Someone in Judgment Day, it, Liv, has, Liv has someone on the inside. If it's not Dom already, it's Finn. And it, you know why? Because Liv was able to do the one thing Rhea couldn't for Dom. Help Dom yeah, help beat, beat his, his dad. dad. And that is something that Dom has always wanted to do. And I thought it was actually never going to happen until Ray retired. Um, but they, they're using it for a soul line. Dom pinned Ray with the help of Liv. And after after Dom literally just like berated uh, Liv a couple weeks ago, I go, Dom's turning on Rhea. Like, it's all a setup. Yeah, I'm not going to lie, though. I, I think I think Dom stays loyal to Rhea. Really? I do. I do. Because I think he's cucked. Because Dom never wanted Liv. He never showed any signs of he Liv. Never he never wanted Rhea either. In, he never really gave in to the temptation. By, but, but he's loyal to the one who turned him. He's loyal to his new family. His judgment day. His mommy. He's a boy. Dom is a boy. <laughs> he's, he's a little he's child. A child. He's not a man. <laughs> he's not a man. Like You know what I mean? Like He still feels like Rey Mysterio's kid. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> like, like, he he still comes off as like a teenager who doesn't know how would wouldn't know what to do with a girl like Liv Morgan. So he stays he stays safe at home with mommy. So mm. like in my mind, Dom's a cock. That's his character. Dom just has no backbone, but Fretzelmania. That's what I mean. He has no balls. Fretzelmania so, put up so a good point here. I think Finn. Yeah, Finn is the one who's working with Rhea. And if you want that image of like Liv standing at the top of the stage kissing someone, you want it to be Finn Balor. Yeah. Yeah. You want to do Edge and Lita? You want to do Edge and Lita? You do it with Finn Balor and not Dom. Dom can't be Edge. Finn can be Edge. <laughs> yeah, that's crazy. And Fred Samania put up a good point. He said Finn's picture was the only part not wrecked in the JD in the Judgment Day Clubhouse this week. Yeah, yeah. Like the 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 the, the breadcrumbs are all there, and they're all leading to Finn. Dom is just the biggest white herring because he's a fucking cuck. Yeah. <laughs> like yeah like you know it is it is it is interesting because there is there is something there with, with Finn either way I think Liv retains his title from Rhea um because if you want a massive baby face and no reason massive baby face have her lose to the person that you know she's supposed to be yeah, the title for yeah I, yeah Liv, Liv is 100% winning this it's a matter of who screws over Rhea is it going to be Dom or is it going to be Finn yeah, there's a lot of compelling and... evidence that Finn's the inside man 
Yeah. There's a lot yeah. of compelling evidence that Finn's the inside man. Like he just And Liv Morgan's just pulling all the strings. She knows exactly and she takes everything away from Rhea except Dom, which Rhea does we really care about Dom. I guess we'll have to find yeah. out. Yeah, and someone's turning in Judgment Day. It's either Dom's turning or, yeah. or Finn's turning. Or Finn's turning. Which I and then whatever happens there, it also has repercussions for Damien. I like so I'm interested I like Finn turning as well. Yeah, I because do. I want Finn to turn. The original idea of Judgment Day, which was created by Adam Copeland Edge, was to give people, highlight people who didn't really get their fair shot. And by and large, it worked. Except for Finn. Yeah. And Finn's the Ottoman out. And I think that's a, I think Finn has a legitimate reason to kind of say, screw this. <laughs> Don Finn yells, where the fuck is Vicky? Actually, <laughs> <laughs> I would love that. I would love that so much. <laughs> that would be so good. <laughs> Where the fuck is Mickey? Where is she? <laughs> oh my god, that'd be great. I wish Mickey Guerrero could be here for this as well. Is she still under contract with AEW? Do we know? The custody of a child <laughs> will be determined in a match. Pretty much. I gotta remember that button. Is the custody of a child. Pretty much. Like, is, is Vicky still under contract with AEW? Because she, that's the one thing missing from this, from this thing. Dude, who knows? Who knows? <laughs> I don't think AEW knows either. Vicky comes in, Dom calls her granny. <laughs> Grandma! <laughs> Great Graham Graham. Uh, <laughs> I mean, if Dom, it's just thing though. If Dom doesn't turn and goes with Liv, does that make Dom. A massive baby face with Rhea. I don't know. This like that. This this is an intriguing story. Like, what does Dom do? Is Finn involved? Like, this is a. Say, I, I also feel like Dom turning is too predictable. But I don't know. Is it him turning, or is it him being who he's supposed to be all along? Because remember, there's no way Dom's a baby face anytime soon. So I think him right. turning on the so baby face Liv. makes him yeah. more of what he actually is. Yeah, scumbag, I yeah, guess. It's, it's, it's going to be, this is going to be, a, I'm like, they built the story really well. I mean, it, there's no reason it couldn't be both of them, and Liv just takes them both. That would be hysterical. That would be hysteric. That'd be amazing. I, I like it. I like it. The money's in Liv getting her revenge. Like, the, like all she got to realize, SummerSlam, traditionally, the heel pay-per-view, the heel PLE. Heel, yeah, it's the heel Heels do a great yeah. job at SummerSlam. Okay, and I think this is a great tone setter for what might actually happen. Although there's going to be some surprises, I think, uh, leading into this whole thing. Uh, but we're both going with Liv here. Moving on, uh, the United States Championship match. <laughs> uh, we have Logan Paul versus L.A. Knight. And yeah, yeah, I think it's about time Logan Paul drops this. I think he's, I think he's, I think he's had his round. Yeah, but at the same time, I was listening to Matt Men the other day, and they got an idea in my head I really want to come true. Oh. Logan wins, and you hear the do 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 do, <laughs> and Cena comes out. <laughs> I'm not gonna lie, dude. I'd much rather see John Cena, Logan Paul, than John Cena, LA Knight. Oof. That's true. If you're going to kick off the retirement tour, I think Logan Paul is a great place to start. That, that Listen, that, that's a good point. It's a very, very good point. Um, whew, that, that's a, I'm thinking, you kind of have it in my head now, I'm thinking of what John Cena can do to Logan Paul on the microphone. I think that's a... Okay, maybe LA Knight should win. <laughs> yeah, now I should say that. I think John Cena and LA Knight looks pretty damn good. I don't want Logan Paul's career to be over. <laughs> John Cena's not, John Cena's not good at putting people over. No, it's, he's not. He, he's tried. He, you know what? He's tried, and he just, he's just not he's good not at good it. Not good at all. By the time he put over Roman, Roman didn't need it. <laughs> yeah, um, it's and even when he tried to put over Roman, John Cena was just miles above him on the mic. Yeah, yeah. The first time he did it, it didn't work. Yeah. And the second time he did it, he didn't need it. Yeah. So. Tell me one person John Cena's put over. I'll wait. I, nobody. Nobody at all. Wade, Wade Barrett? No. Actually, uh, well, not even by KO. I would, I would argue Kevin Owens. 
Okay, he put over Kevin Owens. That's I would fine. argue that's Kevin fine. Owens. Sure. Yeah, that's a fair yeah. argument. Yeah, he put over Kevin Owens. Yeah, I and I <laughs> mid card, mid card, but still counts. It worked. KO came, debuted with the NXT Championship, and beat John Cena. Like that was a big yeah. move. Oh uh, yeah. I there's no one. Uh, AJ. Mm, oof. I don't know. Cause like here's the thing, you look like the three part AJ and Cena. Cause you had you had like AJ beat Cena, or the club beat Cena the first time. Yeah, beat up John Cena. Well, beat up John Cena a- happened after AJ beat him at SummerSlam one on one. Yeah, yeah. And then John Cena left his he left his uh his his headband in the ring, and AJ Styles wore it around for like months. <laughs> 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 Amazing. Yeah, and then, but then Cena came back and beat him at the Rumble for the title. Yeah, that was it. So I don't, I don't know yeah. if it was putting Ooh, so Styles over because Styles was like forever over. With. Styles lost the feud. Okay, so no, that's a no yeah. then. I, I don't. So Kevin Owens. Yeah, I think it's KO. I think it's the only one. Yeah, I think it's Kevin. I, I think it's Kevin, but. To, to this, Randy Orton. Well, Randy Orton was tied. They, they, they went back tied. to back. They they put each other over. They're in the same class. Edge, Edge. They also put each other yeah. over, which was fine though because you wanted to establish both of them as like all four of those guys as stars. Absolutely. Edge. I mean, sorry, Edge, Cena, and Orton. All three yeah. of them. So that's that doesn't bother me as much. Yeah. So yeah, I don't. Yeah, I don't know. I just think I think this time with with Logan Paul is is over with the United States title, and I think you got at this point you got to give LA Knight something. Like he, you, you gotta do. give him something. Yeah, if, if LA Knight doesn't win this, his momentum stops dead in his tracks. Yeah, like he, he went up against Roman. He had that uh, triple threat or fatal four way or what have you. And obviously, he wasn't gonna win, but it, you know, kind of approved yourself. You're in the main event scene. What are you gonna do with it? They obviously didn't give it to him, but like he he beat Styles in a in a fine match at Mania. You know, like it was okay. Um, what more does he have to do to get a title on him? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> you know, um, yeah. although going into an election season, Logan Paul as the United States champion is also very intriguing because you don't know what the hell he's going to say or do <laughs> with that as well. He's already had one presidential candidate yeah. on his show. I, I don't I don't. I, I know we'd be joked about MJF being a Trump supporter <laughs> on TV. Logan um, Paul's a real one. <laughs> I think I know. I know. But I think you you. In all honesty, I think AEW and WWE should keep away from that political controversy because it's too much poison. You're not going to make anyone happy. No, no one wants. anyone's because no one because all people can be talking about is fucking politics and how much everyone hates politics. Yeah, and hates each other. So it's 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 not it's not worth doing. Like yeah, Hulk Hogan went to the RNC by himself. He was not there. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, which is fine. Right? Hulk Hogan can do whatever the fuck he wants. Hulkamaniac till I die, brother. <laughs> you know, if you're politics dog shit. But, like, yeah, I would not have, like, I found Logan Paul, I'd be like, yeah, dude. I know you, he, although he interviewed Trump. Yeah, he did. He had him on, on, he had him on the pulse, yeah. Which is fucking wild. But also, that was also not on behalf of WWE. Either. No, it was not. It, that was his own thing. Yeah. yeah, that's his own thing, which WWE has no control, no part of, nor should they. Yeah, I mean, they. Right? WWE should have no, no, no saying, no saying whether Logan Paul can talk to Donald Trump in his own Correct. program. Correct. So Quan said, remember when NWA booked Tyrus for that exact same reason? That's true. And Tyrus ended up being on Fox News a lot. <laughs> yeah, Fox News world champion. Yeah, dude, for real. Yeah. For I'm real. Still leading touch LA Which is hilarious. Thank you. Is that is that uh, the, the, funk, the Funkasaurus? I, can I, do you want to know when I first realized he was doing Fox News? I was at a, I was in a gym. Like after work, just working out, and you know, obviously TVs around <laughs> everywhere. I'm like in the middle yeah. of a rep, and I go, is that fucking... <laughs> Is that Brodus Clay? Because, like, if you watch him, if you watch Brodus Clay, he's just in a, he's just in a backwards hat and a black hat, t-shirt. And he has the chain. Thing. I'm like, what is going on? <laughs> <laughs> he looks like he's in character. Yeah, was, that's how I knew it was him. I was like, is that Brodus Clay on Fox News? <laughs> I was just like, my God. But yeah, I'm I'm still gonna go with Ellie, not a- yeah, how 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 well how long before Kayla Braxton ends up on Newsmax? Not not <laughs> not at all. She's doing uh she's she's she left, she did a movie. I think I forgot who she's in the movie with. I wanna say David Arcad. Yeah. 
I, I I saw I saw something on Instagram. I forgot where she's at. Yeah, but it's some whatever. She signed she's, she signed with some agency, so she'll be she'll be just fine. Yeah, she'll be fine. She's promoted. She promoted UFC last week. Like she's she's she'll she'll be good. She'll be good. Uh, but yeah, I'm still gonna go with Ellie. Are you also going with Mr. Knight? No, I'm gonna go with Logan Paul. All right, Logan Paul. Some, some vision. All right. Final. I love how people people comparing his run to Dean Ambrose's though. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Which, so maybe they should take it off. Oh, to be honest, you know, like, fuck that LA Knight. No. That's reason enough to take it off him. Like, no, this guy's nothing like that Dean Ambrose. Get the fuck <laughs> out of here. Oh my god, no, no. Logan Paul's had a better run than Dean Ambrose. Is what you what you could do? Oh my god, dude. Okay, I got it. I got the what? finish. Logan Paul goes for the brass knucks, and then you hear the do 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 do, <laughs> and then he somehow he he kills KSI, <laughs> takes the brass knucks, and LA Knight ends up winning. And then John Cena Tries to put LA, LA Knight over with a point, but gets himself over because now all we're going to be talking about is John Cena versus Logan Paul. That's exactly what's going to happen at SummerSlam. There you go. Ah, LA Knight wins. There you go. And that's how you, that's how you incorporate politics because John Cena far right, Logan, I mean far left, Logan Paul far right. There you go. And you get the title off of it. You just insinuate that they're on opposite sides of the coin and then you just work that way. It's going to be a great November tournament. <laughs> <laughs> Pretty much. Pretty much. I like that idea. Uh, but so I, I still say LA Knight. Uh, sorry. So probably the most predictable match on this card. Braun Breaker, Sami Zayn. Are you sure? I listen. I think it's dude. Every single time we say Sami is gonna lose, you're running the time. same exact match as you did last. Every you, single time. They're running the time. same exact match from Money in the Bank. He can't lose twice. You're setting up as a world beater and a monster. I know. <laughs> I know, dude. I know. I wanted to win so bad. But, dude, Sammy has made me look like a fool so many times. <laughs> listen, I think he's he's out of miracles right now. I Listen, he sold his soul for the Gunther win. I think he's out of miracles at this point. Like, I know we called Sammy Zayn. We said Sammy Zayn in an NXT one. He, when I thought Nakamura match, we we're like, yeah, he could easily be the next Daniel Bryan. Yeah. And I'm going to go on a live and say he is a bigger underdog than Daniel Bryan. Yes. And it's, and it's like, I think he does Daniel Bryan better than Daniel Bryan. <laughs> <laughs> Who I think, I think, and we're going to probably talk about it in a couple of weeks. Daniel Bryan's, Daniel Bryan's uh, swan song is happening all in. Yes. Yes. Congratulations yeah, to him. Yeah. Brian going out, going yeah, out we'll, on his own we'll, term. We'll, we'll, we'll give, we'll give the man his absolutely. flowers. Absolutely, absolutely, absolutely. Uh, but, but going to this, I, I think Sammy's run out of, out of, out of lives here, and I, I see this, I see this as because if you're gonna do this, and you know Triple H and his callbacks and stuff, this is Kevin Owens beating. This is a TKO. Kevin Owens beating Sami Zayn for the NXT title. This is an annihilation. Did you watch Braun versus Elia the other oh week? God, it so much, when so it, much fun. Um, did you think that was a, a shoot or a work when the ref stoppage because he hit his head on the apron? I think it was a. I think it was a uh, a work. I think that was yeah. a work. It looked very real. It I saw the replay. It, it looked very. It looked. Well, I didn't. I didn't see him actually like hit his head. Hit his head on the angles. Yeah, they did. They didn't. They, they only had. In fact, they only had one camera angle. Makes me think it was a yeah. work. I, I thought it was a work. Um, but Braun looked, cause it looked like the Braun was going for the, like the finish was coming though. I thought he was going to get back in the ring. Braun was in the corner, ready to spear yeah. him. Gets in, spear, one, two, three. So it could have been a shoot. He could have gotten a stinger. I mean, he did hit the back of his head on the apron, yeah, allegedly. Yeah, that's your central nervous system. So, so. It's the hardest part of the ring. Like, that's true. Know. That's true. And it's also your, like, <laughs> from uh, anatomy, it's a central nervous system. All your nerves are there. So. Yeah, because it was a it was a great match yeah. that kind of got soiled by soiled by the Listen, finish. Those NXT calls this year, Ilya and Braun Breaker doing f- unreal, unreal stuff. It's 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 kind of crazy how um, Carmelo is getting booked the worst out of the three of them. Yeah, well, he's putting fun matches up. He's just up against Andrade, who has no like aura to him. Yeah, yeah, that's what I mean. <laughs> Which is like I would love to see because like so if we go back to LA Knight and Logan Paul, because you kind of already have that, like, who's, whose dick is bigger argument between LA Knight and Carmelo Hayes. And yeah. you can reignite that as you well. Could. Yeah. I think if LA Knight gets the belt, which I actually do think he is, and then his first feud up against a Carmelo Hayes. I think it's, yeah, yes. I think you do that. That, that, that is, that is a good spot. That is a very good spot for Carmelo Hayes to be mm-hmm. in, but he will lose while Braun Baker will win. Yeah. 
it's just like because these two guys with the big draft picks on each brand, like this is the next guy. Yeah. And it's it's hard for me not to compare Braun to Carmelo because it's not even close. Yeah, even though it wasn't Braun drafted like earlier. No, no. Carmelo was first pick. I know Carmelo was first first. I don't remember he was first pick, but I know he was first round. First, sorry, first round. round. He was first round. Braun was not Why first. Why do I feel round. like Braun? I'm mixing up him with probably like Odyssey Jones, who was drafted like three years ago and never appeared on Raw. <laughs> never appeared. I think I think Braun was second. Something like that. Okay. Maybe No, it's it's hard to compare. It's hard to compare. It's hard not to compare them because they were they are coming from the same yeah. class essentially. So like it's totally understandable. Uh I think Carmelo's time is coming, but I think the Right now, like we said earlier, the better stories are happening on Raw. Way better. That, that's yes. the better stories Absolutely. are happening on Raw, and, I don't, and for a while it was SmackDown. For a while, SmackDown was the better story. Yeah, for a long time, it was SmackDown because yeah. Roman in the Bloodline mm -hmm. and Sammy was over there too. Yeah. <laughs> so, but right now, the better stories are happening on Raw, and I think that's that's also kind of a a, a product of what's happening to some of the characters on both brands. Is that yeah. a lot of the focus? And, that, and that's and that's not a dig on Cody and the Bloodline no, it's not. either. Except that has been really good. It's just the rest of SmackDown has been dragging that shit down. Yeah, yeah. you know, and you know, Tiffy and Nia and Bailey thing is also that's a other big storyline. But about everything else is kind of like it's not there yet. Uh, but with this, I I think Braun takes the title. I I really do. I think this is an annihilation. I think this is an annihilation. SummerSlam is a spot for annihilations yeah. too. I think this is like this is a shock TKO knockout, like how Kevin Owens destroyed Sammy to win the title. It's one of those things where like Sammy is a great babyface. Sammy is also a, a Dolph Ziggler level of a of a seller. All right, remember here's the thing though, because you don't want to bury Sammy either. Remember when Kofi got beat by Brock in like 34 seconds? I think it's, I think it lasts longer than 34 seconds. It was a few yeah, minutes, yeah. right? It was maybe three yeah, minutes. Yeah. Do you want to do that with Sammy? I think you can. I get, I get, I get the underdog mm -hmm. where it's like you always think the underdog is going to come back, come back, and so it's the shock value to beat him really, really quickly. Yeah. But it hasn't worked that well in the. Past. I don't want it to be quick. I want it to be like a slow death. Like he's yeah. dragging like it, it out. Was, if it was the, if it was the Gunther match at Mania all over again, except Sammy didn't come back. Yeah. Okay. Something like that. Yeah. You know, it's it's got to be a slow and painful thing where he like, where Braun just like doesn't stop or he has to be stopped by somebody, to like prove yeah. his point. And the, unless unless Sammy's at like a Cena level over where Brock it just didn't matter. <laughs> yeah, it's one of those things where, since this match was at Money in the Bank, you cannot do the same match twice. You've got to do. You've got to. You've got to progress the story. Yeah. Somehow, and I I think. You built up Breaker so much. He's a, he's essentially this. He's a more athletic Goldberg. He has the same goddamn tattoo. Um, you know, <laughs> you know, him running crazy. The eyes yeah, Goldberg was a little short <laughs> and a little more athletic. Yeah, Goldberg knew more than like three moves. <laughs> then he would be Braun. Yeah, Breaker. yeah. Uh, Braun, uh, Braun Breaker is just Goldberg as a running back. Yeah, who can also do a Hurricane Rana. Terrifying. It's very terrifying. They called it what 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 did what did Pat Pat McAfee call it? The Bronen Bronensteiner or something? I forgot what it was. The Breakensteiner? I think it was the Breakensteiner, yeah. Breakensteiner, yeah. which is a great name. Yeah, it's uh, it's, great, it's a great name. Listen, you Sammy, I think Sammy is fine. And if Sammy and if Sammy has time off or something coming, annihilating him at SummerSlam and like a long, slow, painful death. Like this needs to but you need to have people in the crowd like gasping for air. Of how bad Sammy's getting beat. Sammy's going to put him mm. over, I think, and this is the great way to put him over. Yeah, I hope. Uh, I think you should. I'm going, I'm going but, Breaker. You know, you convinced me. I'm going to go with Breaker too. <laughs> I'm, I'm. It, it has to be done well. Like this needs to be. This needs to be. An, this needs to be an annihilation. Absolutely, an, like annihilate Sammy. Get him off TV for a while. Like, you know, he essentially, you have Braun Breaker retire Ricochet from WWE. Have him take out Sammy for an extended period of time, too. I don't know, Fretz, who you got? I don't know. Still I don't know if Fretz is still watching. We'll see. He'll, he'll come Fretz back. Fretz who you got? Whoever's still watching, tell us who you got. That's right. Braun was on the main roster for Melo got drafted. I was right. Thank you, Taquan. Braun was, or they had, remember, because they signed Braun. Yeah, he was. A, he was a, they yeah, he signed was a Braun. Times. Fred says Braun. They signed Braun, um, but they uh, Carmelo was drafted because that's what it was. 
Braun Breaker was a signee, but then we were like, how is it going to work if he's still the tag team champions with, like, Baron Corbin? Because Baron Corbin and him were tag yeah. champions, and actually, like, how's this working? Yeah, <laughs> and they, put, they brought him back down for a hot second, then they brought him back yeah. up. Yeah, you're right. Yeah. Also, what, talk about strange bedfellows, another deep term. Baron Corbin and Apollo Crews as a tag team on SmackDown. Weird. It's very weird. weird. Yeah, yes, that's, how, that's how you know SmackDown's <laughs> not that great. It's very weird. Over oh, in tag division spawn, like DIY, uh, Austin Creed, and all of that. Uh, but yeah, just the overall better product right now is Raw. But we're going Breaker yeah. here. Uh, and that is, that's the card. The only question, that's the yeah, card, the baby. only question we need to actually ask, uh, we need to set it. I said Dom turned on Rhea. What's your official stance? Is Dom turning on Rhea, or do you still go with Finn? No. no I'm going gotcha. with Finn. Okay, so I got that down right. So yeah, this is the SummerSlam card. Again, 7 Eastern, uh, Saturday night. Um, in, there's they've opened up a lot of extra sections for Cleveland Brown Stadium, so I've heard so a lot of extra seats. So right. I know cool. they cool. start. I know it's both. I know it's both sides. I don't know how much of both sides, but I know they do have both sides of the of the stadium sections open as well. So it's going to be interesting to see how that plays out. Summer Seven obviously doesn't draw as big as WrestleMania. Uh, yeah. So and we we know that especially from when they did WrestleMania in Nashville, it wasn't there wasn't a full stadium, but it was big enough, and they they portrayed it as big enough. Detroit, they, it didn't look that it didn't look that bad on TV though. In Nashville, no, it did not. And Detroit, Detroit, I think was slammed because it was inside. Yeah. Um, Detroit, I think was slammed as well. But I listen, we've talked a lot about all of these different matches because they built up all these matches. Very, very well. The only question left is how how good will this paper be? One being the worst, ten being the best thing ever. Will Tarasak? I have very high expectations for this. I'm gonna go straight nine. Oof. Oh man. Um. I'm. I'm not gonna do nine. I'm gonna go eight point five. But it's it's. I think this is gonna be a fun ride. There's a lot of stuff that can go on, but I think I'm gonna go eight five as well. For this, Charles is being a dick and doing eight point one two five. Eight point one two five. You can't do that. You're already eight and a half. <laughs> yeah, eight or eight and a half. Yeah, you can round yeah. down. We're, we're we're not doing the Dave scale, <laughs> not at all. But yeah, no, SummerSlam is going to be fun. I'm very excited for this. Uh, the Miz is hosting, which means our troop is going to be there. Did you see the segment on Raw this week? No. So, <laughs> so Miz is like, I'm going to be hosting the biggest party of the summer. And our troop comes like, oh, we holding a party? And our troop's like, Miss, how are you gonna throw a party in Cleveland when you live in LA? <laughs> He's like, it's not a house party. <laughs> got him. He's like, but you got hors d'oeuvres coming? <laughs> like, no. <laughs> Do you want hors And then Cavi Keller's like, yeah, Miss, are you gonna bring hors d'oeuvres? And Miss is like, I'll bring, I'll yeah. bring hors d'oeuvres. <laughs> <laughs> I'll bring hors d'oeuvres. <laughs> yeah. Bring Sandy Pops. Yeah, yeah, freaking. Our troop's gonna bring appetizers. Our, it's gonna, it sounds it's gonna be our troop and Miz hosting Summer Sandwich. It's gonna. The, I hope R Truth this has a box of Ritz. He's like, I bought hors d'oeuvres. <laughs> Ritz crackers. I got them from the Ritz Hotel. Or whatever or whatever or whatever food whatever snack food is sponsoring them. Is what R Truth. Yeah, <laughs> like, ch- like Cheez Its. Yeah. Snickers. Pug me Snickers. Real quick, real quick, before we before we grow up. What if what if it's neither what if it's neither Liv or what's neither Rhea or Finn that turns mm-hmm. on Rhea? What if what if it's what if it's Rhea that turns on Dom and like gets with Jey Uso because they've been teasing that for a while for a while god no (laughs) that is the one thing missing from this there's no we're not going to get a giant Jey Uso like yeet chant or yeet entrance dude uh, I'm kind of I'm a little over Jey Uso to be honest is it is it the uh is the star is the styrofoam hands isn't Mike yeah, Cole doing yeah, it now too? Is that ruined for you? Yep, it's it's <laughs> it's it's wearing off. The, the Uso push, it's Yeet is no longer working for me. It's like what else it's you got? It's the foam fingers. It's the foam fingers. It is really what it is. Um but yeah, that is all that we have for this show this week. So thank you guys for joining us. It's it's very good to be back. Uh although I do need to continue my dynasty in NCAA football or EA Sports College football at some point, all all three of them. But it, it's good to, it's good to have a little break from the from the video games thus far and my and my ridiculous dynasty um that's that's happening at the moment. So any final thoughts, Mr. Tarashak, before we get out of here? I'm, I'm excited. Then we can, then we can nerd part. out on uh 
on all the big Marvel happenings. Yeah, <laughs> I'm going to miss it, but uh, I'm going to watch it on Sunday when I get home. So that should be yeah. fun. It's going to be a good time. I, I, I bet it will. So uh, without further ado, Mr. Tarshock, hit me with that music, sir. Ladies and gentlemen, you have been listening to Kings of the Rings podcast, episode number 384, Summer in the Land. The land without LeBron because he's over there trying to win a gold medal for Team USA in the Olympics. I've been your host, King Ricky Rose. You can find me in Ambassador Biggs across all social media outlets, B-I-G-Z, Ambassador Biggs, Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, Snapchat, Threads, because that's a thing now uh, for me at least. Um, B-I-G-Z, Ambassador Biggs. Find Kings of the Rings podcast at K-O-T-R underscore podcast across all social media outlets. The links to all of that are in the description below. If you are listening to this show, one, thank you. If you're watching the show, also thank you as well. Uh, make sure you're listening to us at least on Wrestle Addict Radio, the cure for the Common Wrestling Podcast, and follow Wrestle Addict Radio socials at Addict underscore Wrestle on uh, Twitter and at Wrestle Addict Radio everywhere else on the interwebs. SummerSlam is going to be a wild, wild, fun time. Uh, so I hope, I think it will be. I think we're going to be shocked by a lot of things that are going to occur. Uh, and it, it's, I, I'm looking forward to this. I'm, I'm actually pretty excited for SummerSlam. Will Tarashak. Uh, yeah, it's it's going to be a grand old time. Your boy is very excited. Um, but yeah, it's, it's hot in here. So let's get to this post show so I can turn this fan so on. So hot now. The Yankees lose this game. Oh, they're losing? Yeah, dude, we'll talk about okay. it. Okay. Awful. <laughs> awful. This game is fucking Jesus awful. Christ. Let me come back next week. Hopefully the Yanks will stop losing. Uh, hopefully K will return and hopefully uh, we'll have some crazy stuff to talk about. And hopefully AEW doesn't rename another one of their freaking titles for the um team time so until next week folks goodbye good night we'll see you soon and we got to start thinking about this as all ends happening uh we might have to bring slack back uh but until yes. then folks fuck you slack see you next week this has been a wrestle attic radio branded podcast